All right, welcome back. Now that we're tidying up with chapter three and how the electric field and magnetic field interact with one another, now we get to see uh, Maxwell's equations all compiled and put together. Uh, this time we get to highlight the need for Maxwell's correction. So to highlight this, let's start with this uh, question. The statement reads, a fat wire, radius A, carries a constant current I, uniformly distributed over its cross-section, a narrow gap in a wire of width W, which is much, much less than A, forms a parallel plate capacitor, as shown in the diagram. Find the magnetic field in the gap at a distance S less than A from the axis. So again, we're inside the wire. Let's look at it. We see that we have wire radius A, current traveling from left to right, you see that uh, the parallel plate capacitor is formed because you have an accumulation of charge on the left that's going to be uh, built up and then shot over at some, you know, potential or magnetic field. It, the charges will get over there, but you see the width is there. Now, again, this is not to scale because the W is much, much less. And again, we want S less than A, so we know that we're going to be inside the wire. So what we need to know is the displacement current, which is uh, JD, uh, not, maybe not the best of name for this thing, but it is what it is for now. We'll see why later. Uh, but we see that that's equal to epsilon naught uh, times the partial derivative of E with respect to T. And we know that for a parallel plate capacitor, the electric field is sigma, the surface charge, not conductivity, mind you, over epsilon naught, uh, in the z hat direction, but we know that the surface charge is Q divided by the area. Uh, we'll see that that comes in handy quite soon. All right, so let's try uh, applying Ampere's law to this to find out what our field is. We see that uh, the Ampere loop at R equal S, um, we see that the B dot DL is equal to mu naught I D enclosed. Uh, we got to be a little more careful with our notation now. But you see that the line integral um, at r equal s gives us sd phi where we're going from 0 to 2 pi since we're a wire and uh, mu naught id enclosed we're going to have to solve for separately so you see that we get b is equal to 2 pi s equal mu naught id enclosed now to find id enclosed we need to find the displacement uh, current density so with that we take the time derivative of the electric field and we see that the uh, epsilon knots cancel, that's nice. But we see that the time derivative only affects the uh, Q, the charge, and we know that the derivative of Q with respect to T is just the current. So what we end up with is I over A, the cross-sectional area in the Z hat direction, but A here is just pi A squared, okay? That's just the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now, if we put this together, uh, with the magnetic field, what we can say is that from the current density, we can find the uh, enclosed current, displacement current, by taking the uh, integral of it, the area integral of it. So you see here that we divide by 2 pi s from the magnetic field side of Ampere's Law over to the current side, and then we plug in uh, J uh, D enclosed dot dA for the I enclosed, and now we just run it through. We see dA is equal to s bar ds d phi, where s bar is from 0 to s, and d phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. Again, pretty standard things here. Um, and then we see here that after we evaluate the integral, we get um, a factor of 2 pi that cancels. The s from Ampere's Law on the left-hand side cancels with one of the factors there. And you see we conclude down to B equals mu naught I S over two pi A squared in the phi hat direction. And, you know, again, we'll see why this becomes more apparent or the need for this correction becomes more apparent here soon, but be aware it's there. 